you've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. When you know that you are in right relationship with God Almighty and you understand how God loves you so much. As it says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God dearly, dearly loves us. Ah, oh, this morning we don't have the air conditioning. We sure have cicadas. I can hear them. But I am going to be in Mark chapter 4. And this was a, the thought that came to me. God will either calm the storm or calm you in the storm. When you have Jesus Christ, it will be one thing or the other. Either he's going to calm the storm like he did, does here in Mark 4. Or he will calm you in the storm. As he did Job, as he did Noah. God will take care of his children. All things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. God will work things out for our good. When we realize that God created us for eternity, not for just this short period of time here. This flesh, it doesn't matter how wealthy, how rich, how healthy, everybody will one day die. But then comes the resurrection. For those who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, our resurrection is going to be glorious. That will be the beginning of true life, abundant life in Christ Jesus. The things that God has been preparing for his children. It will be something that we can't even begin to imagine. But to those who refuse Jesus Christ, them is the beginning of damnation. It'll be horrible for eternity. But not because God wanted it that way, but because they refused the great gift He's given us through Jesus Christ. God made a way for us to be reconciled to Him. But it's up to each individual whether they're going to accept the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. It can't be purchased. It can't be won. It is a gift of God that must be accepted. So, here we go. Let's get into Mark chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 35. This was, Jesus had been speaking about the parables. He gave the parable of the sower, the parable of the mustard seed. He'd been talking to the crowds in parables. And afterwards, it says this, in verse 35, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along, along in the boat as he was, and other little boats also went with him. So it wasn't, you know, we always think of the disciples and Jesus in the boat, and that, that was it. But there was more boats involved. There was other little boats I imagine those people in those boats also were fearful of that storm that had come up. You see, your influence, your, the Christ in you, you being with Christ, influences those around you as well. I mean, God will protect you and he can protect those around you. I mean, the Christ in you, the authority that you have in Jesus Christ, will influence your surroundings as well. It says, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and Jesus was sleeping. Here comes this big storm, water coming in, and it says, But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They were sure they were going to die. It says, Then he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm but he said to them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him they didn't quite grasp who Jesus was yet they were following him they wanted him to be the king of the Jews 
but they didn't grasp yet that he was also God incarnate. God come in the flesh to dwell among men for the forgiveness of our sins. Verse 33 says this. I, mean, I know I started in 35, but I'm going to go back to 33. It says, And with many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. You see, they had heard all those parables. And it says that, you know, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. And this is what I wrote down when I read that part. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. And this is my thought here. He, through the Holy Spirit, let me let this plane go past. Hopefully it's far enough. So he, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, teaches us today. His word explains to us and teaches us. But we must spend time alone with God for him to do so. The thought that God Almighty wants to spend intimate time with you should be enough reason for you to want to spend time with him. See, you know, we think sometimes, oh, if we could have just walked with the disciples and been around Jesus. He's with us. We just have to spend time with him. We have to acknowledge that he is with us. And the Spirit of God will teach us. I mean, it is an awesome thing to know that the Spirit of God Almighty dwells in each one of us. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have so little understanding of what that means. But as we grow closer to Him, as we spend time alone with Him, more and more of who He is, and how much he loves you will be revealed to you. <sighs> I wrote this down as well. Do you have someone that you look up to and wish you can hang out with and talk to? You know, so many people say, oh, I wish I could spend time with such and such an athlete or such and such a singer or, or teacher, you know, or influencer, motivational speaker. How much more should we want to do that with God how much more should we want to desire to spend time with God Almighty and the thing is he comes and meets us in our pajamas with our cup of coffee with our tea in our car driving he is willing to be with us if we will acknowledge that the Spirit of God is with us there to speak to us to comfort us to tell us the things that God the Father wants for us but we have to get alone with him we have to acknowledge his presence with us we have to welcome him to us it says and then I wrote down how much more should we want to do that with God if you do not have that desire ask the Lord to put that desire in you seek after him and it is already 10 after and I am out of time tomorrow we're gonna hit a little bit of Genesis 5 the story of Noah I want you today especially those that live here in Florida remember who you have with you in this storm the disciples had Christ in the boat the one who spoke and calm the winds. Sometimes he will calm the winds, sometimes we, he won't. With Noah and the ark, the storm didn't stop. So it lasted a very long time. But Noah was safe in the ark. We are safe in Christ. The Lord is with us. If you've accepted Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, and you've truly made him Lord of your life. I'm not just saying that you said the words and you remember about him every once in a while. But truly accepted him as Lord in your life to where you seek him. In all the decisions that you make, it's like, Lord, is this good with you? You know, you live a life that you want to please your Lord. That's making him Lord of your life. 
You know, it says if, if you love him, then you'll obey his commandments. If he's truly your Lord, then you're going to want to follow what his word says. You're going to want to live your life in a way that honors him. And when you do that, you will find that you can keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Keep that praise song in your heart. Remember, you're not a victim. You're a victor in Christ Jesus. He will either calm the storm or he will calm you in the storm. Trust me.